Welcome to Year 11 Data Handling Part 3. And we stopped right here last time because I asked you to have a look at the straight line graph to see if you could spot the problem. Um, and for those of you who have been able to do that, um, excellent. For those of you who haven't, this is the problem. Uh, remember how I said that the vertical axis really needs to be the dependent variable? If you have a look um, between my two columns here, my dependent variable is still the gravitational force because depending on how close things are, the force will change. So the force is the dependent variable and it needs to be on the vertical axis. So my vertical axis really should extend all the way up to like 350. Having a look here, it doesn't. Um, and Looking down here, this is where the axis extends to beyond 350. So in fact, I've actually plotted the wrong thing on the axis. So the axes have been inverted. So what I need to do is actually change the axes and actually report the data. So I'm going to do that by um, just right clicking on the graph and actually going to an area called Select Data. You can also do that um, the same thing by going into Design up here in chart tools, the same button appears. So you can go to both place and go to select data. Now I'm going to actually um, just edit the data series that I've currently got now. So if you click on edit, um, it will come up with a, a little list of what they think is your x value. So notice that my x value currently um, has highlighted the gravitational force column and that's actually incorrect. So I'm going to change that by just pressing delete and actually choosing the right data. This is my X, my independent variable, and then my Y axis will be these ones, my dependent variable. So before I click OK, just double checking, my vertical axis has numbers that go all the way up to, um, yep, around 350. And on the horizontal axis, now this time it should go all the way up to about one and that's correct. So click OK, and this is the correct version of the graph. So this is the thing that I was referring to in part one, where if you set up the columns incorrectly, you might have plotted um, things on the wrong axes. But now that it's done, um, I'm going to just give you a bit of time to edit this so that it follows the correct convention um, for physics that I covered in part one. And hopefully, um, if you pause the video now, work on it, and you can check the answer in a moment. All right, um, you should be at around the same place as me, um, having a graph that looks a little bit like this with the correct title, axis labels, and now we're ready to actually plot the straight line. So first of all, I'm just going to make these data points just a little bit bigger. Um, and I'm actually just going to make sure that um, I can actually see these dots. So I just right clicked over the data points and go to marker, marker options. And I'm just going to make them a little bit bigger. Now they should all grow. You can actually grow them to massive um, data points like this. Um, but obviously that would defeat the purpose of actually having a beautiful graph. So I would recommend, if you're going to print this out, um, eight is probably the max that you should go to. Um, and just for the sake of this little activity, I'm going to change the color to turn them red so that I can tell the difference between these and um, the other graph that I'm going to use. While I'm here, I might also change just the border of the data points or else they will have a little um, blue border. Okay. So now I've got these beautiful red dots um, for my data points. Next thing I need to do, actually fit a line through it. So I go to add trend line and this time um, automatically the straight line trend line comes up, but we actually do want to see the equation. So just left click on this little triangle at the end, go to more options. And now it does come up with the last little tab that you use. So these little tabs are like, um, editing what it looks like, some of the effects that you might like to use on your line. Um, but the cool thing is this little one that looks like graph is actually the one that we want to go to. So linear line, we want to also do show the equation, um, show the R squared value. But not only that, um, I moved it. 
not only that, um, we also want to do something a little bit different. If you have a look at um, the equation, it actually shows a really, really small intercept, which is actually probably not reasonable, because if the object um, is really, really far away, there really should be no gravitational force. So I'm going to set the intercept to zero, just to force my line through zero. And the cool thing is, um, there's this little thing here called forecast. I'm just going to show you this because we talked about interpolation um, in the last example that we did uh, when we did a curved line graph and I told you to put some grid lines in. But extrapolation, which is to look beyond your data range, um, can be done by using this awesome process called forward or backward cast. So, for example, if you were asked... Um, for what happens when 1 on r squared equals to 1.2, and you're like, oh, um, I could either solve it using the equation, or I could actually read it straight off the graph. What you can do is you can go tell the graph to go forward, which is um, to the right, and exactly tell how far to go in terms of the x-axis. So in this case, it will be go ahead by another 0.2. And if you... Go ahead by another point two. Yes, it click enter. It will now show you where that data point will be, and you can actually read that off the graph what occur. Before we finished, obviously one last thing: um, the equation really does need to be tailored for your particular problem. So um, if we don't change it, it actually weirdly looks like our initial graph. So I will do that now. So this will be F G subscript. And over here it will be 1 over R squared. That's one whole thing. Now, some of you might be wondering, is there a shortcut key for this? There is, actually. So, Control shift f actually brings up this page straight away, for those of you who love shortcuts. So, superscript, and that's it. So, that concludes um, one particular method of actually turning curved line graphs into straight line, um, purely because it allows us to tell a lot more information. So, now that you've finished this, watching this and seeing how this is done, um, there's a set of data that you need to have a go at trying to produce both a table, a curved line graph, and also a straight line graph like this.